Hey everybody, so I have six guitar bodies that just arrived from China. I have no idea really what to expect. These things could be anything. So I'm gonna unbox them and see what the heck they're all about. So they arrived like this. There's three guitars all packaged together, one on top of each other. Um, here, I'll kind of show you what the package looks like. This was just shipped through <clears throat> China post office. Uh, I didn't order enough that would make it worth doing like sea freight or something like that. And the cost to ship these things was crazy. It was almost as much as the guitars themselves. Okay, let's open them up. Okay, right, well, one of them wants to break loose. <laughs> and I guess he'll be the first one we open then. So here, I'm not gonna look at the import paperwork, probably, first of all, because I probably don't understand any of it. <laughs> but also because that's not the fun part. So I ordered these and tried not to violate any of Gibson's trademarks. Even before, I ordered these months ago. So even before they were running around suing everybody, and trademarking a bunch of stuff that they'd never trademarked before. Uh, you know, I just didn't want to do anything shady, so um, try, tried to be uh, a legal eagle here and not cause them no blues. So, can we get one of them off here? Oh, looks like the box is going to open up. All right, so we got this guy. He is in the styrofoam. Let's see if we can open this. I want to preserve the styrofoam because I don't have cases for all these, and these are how they're going to have to be stored and probably shipped. All right, there goes the top. We've opened the sarcophagus here, and I ordered these without any hardware, no strings, nothing. So they're not guitars, they're just guitar bodies. Smell a little bit of a chemical smell. They, they've been painted relatively recently. They made these specifically for me. So, okay. Here's guitar number one. Ah. I get a little neck rest going on here. Ah. Okay, so. Um, again, the idea here was that a lot of times people buy chips and and then immediately they notice that the pickups, the wiring, the electronics are terrible, but the wood's kind of okay. So, um, so I ordered mine without any of the stuff that I was going to replace anyway. So here we go. Now, one thing they did, I'm not that happy about. They actually, ooh, that's nice. Okay, so. They actually uh, cut the headstock in a specific way that people are used to having these headstocks cut, but I actually requested that they didn't do this, and they did it anyway. So, all right, here we go. This is the very first one, styrofoam and all. So it's actually got my name at the top, Strebler. So I'm trying not to infringe on Gibson's trademarks. This headstock shape, pretend you didn't see it. <laughs> um, I actually ordered it not to be like this. And then after they had made them and shipped them, they sent me pictures and I was like, you can't do that. So I don't know what I'll do. I'll have to modify the headstock or something before they're sold because uh, uh, they, <laughs> they did not um, give me the headstocks that I really wanted here. So how does it look to me? I actually paid a lot extra to make this thing thicker than normal. Um, they included a little poker chip here. You just double, double stick, double stick taped it to here. So I'll just leave that on there for now. Okay, good. And um, I don't know, I mean, it's not bad. Uh, okay, time to start looking at the important part, the neck frets. Back looks good. They couldn't do a one piece mahogany back. Uh, they did two. Wait a minute. Whew. Whew. 
Yeah, it's two piece mahogany back. So um, they told me they couldn't do a one piece. They did a two piece and then that looks like they put a veneer over the back here. All right, so cosmetically, um, it actually looks pretty good. Quality of the wood, you can tell, uh, they talked about, you know, companies like Gibson get really good wood. That's one of the reasons why they're able to charge what they do. The wood for this is not as nice, um, but it's just really a very nice guitar. And so you can see little flaws in the wood, like there. Um, there's a little tiny flaw up here on the headstock. I'll get some close-ups here in a minute. Oh, that is a nice neck. Frets actually feel really good. I thought I was going to have to redo these, and these are really nice. Okay. So, uh, you know, I am pretty impressed. So let me get the camera. We'll let bring this in and let you take a look. Uh, this first one, actually, I was like in the photos, it looked too glossy, but this is perfect. So the reality is this is not intended to replace a uh, $2,200 or these days three or four thousand dollar Les Paul but to give you a playable uh, facsimile of it again I'm just gonna ha you're just gonna have to believe me I didn't want them to cut the headstock this way I, I will probably show you the instructions I gave them at some future point when I talk about the process that I went through with this but uh uh, I wanted it to be a headstock that wasn't this. So um, I'm not trying to infringe on Gibson's trademarks. It doesn't say Gibson. The Actually, the logo looks really good. So, so far, so far, so good. Logo looks, well, let's say the logo looks pretty good. Um, good. It's actually a certain species of neck. Nice tenon joint in there. It's gorgeous. The joinery's good. Um, they went with the thicker body, like I requested. Uh, gave me a minimal amount of hardware. I just wanted like cavity covers on it. And all the electronics are gonna be uh, premium US made stuff. So this thing's gonna get um, Seymour Duncan pickups, Tone Pros down here, uh, CTS pots, uh, orange drop capacitors, and Grover tuners. Um, of some kind or another, and a graph tech nut. So this is number one. Um, <laughs> I actually have six of these. Let me see if I can find one of the blue ones. Okay, this one's also another orange one. I'm just gonna take a look at it. Um, okay, uh, they put all the truss rods in, truss rod adjustment tools in here. It's good because I wondered. And I also asked them to give me one of their, oh, they gave me a bridge and um, stop bar set. Well, I wanted to see how good these are. I'm going to put Tone Pros on the first group. But this is a way to save money. Um, although, I don't know, Tone Pros are so good, I kind of hate to not use them. Okay, so here we go. The logos, they're okay. I kind of thought they would turn out better. I sent them a bunch of files and it's pretty clear that they used one of the low resolution graphics files that I sent to them because it's like this looks almost like pixelated a little bit. It does have a little bit of a shiny look to it, almost like a almost like a three-dimensional look, but um, uh, it is uh, it's not as good as what I'd want, but it's okay. It's all right. So I mean you have to consider price in all this. You know, things are good, but uh, good for, you know, at what cost. So this one's actually very nice. Rosewood's not quite as nice on the fingerboard. Get some linseed oil on this. Frets. Frets actually feel reasonably good on this guy, too. And I might, ah, oh, those are a little jagged there. I might take those down just a little bit. Right, that looks good. All right, so this is another one. Um, up here, a little slight little, slight little issue with paint there. On the back, this one clearly looks like a two-piece, um, but nice and thick. It's like they added some width to the neck of the joint. 
Interesting. Okay, so we've got a little... I Again, I made these thicker. Uh, they clearly added a little bit of wood here. So this is two pieces of wood in the heel. So... Um, but not disappointed. Uh, so quality of mahogany here, um, it's it's okay. <laughs> so I won't say that it's great, but again, I'm, I'm actually super impressed with these. And so the idea again is to get a guitar body that I can put just top of the line hardware and stuff on. Okay, so that's number two. I'll bet the, all three of these are orange. We'll find out in a bit. Okay, so the first three were my orange ones. I really uh, am kind of excited to see what the blue ones look like. Um, you know, we all know how these look. I wanted the orange, if you look at the old original 59 Les Pauls, they were made with what's called a cherry sunburst, but over time they all turned orange. <laughs> so what you got was the sunburst faded, and that's what I went for here. Now, obviously, this doesn't look faded, it looks brand new. But you can always knock shine off of something. It's a lot harder to put it back on. They actually, you know, I tried to give them a lot. Of, oh God, I hate that noise. Whew. Tried to give them a lot of pictures of the color I wanted. And if you've ever worked with paint, it is just a biatch to ever get paint to match or to get tones that you want. I mean, I know that those of you who work in graphics, you know, you give them Pantone numbers and stuff, and, uh, you know, you can get that going. But, like, in the real world where you're painting things, it's, like, paint isn't even consistent from lot to lot. Okay. And this one. Ooh, nice, consistent mahogany here. Fingerboard's good. i oh, got one fret here. It's either, oh, that's not good. I'll have to take a look at this and see what I can do. I have to reset that guy. That's not a good fret. Okay, other than that, um, top looks really good. Again, we got something going on here. Where the paint is. I don't know what that is. I'll have to ask him. That's really weird. That was all three, so it's something in their process that's causing this little dark thing right there. The back on this looks really good. That's the best looking back so far. Uh, still two piece back though. Uh, your Les Paul has a one piece back. And yeah, I mean, this one's good. I am gonna ask him about this though, cause that's really weird. Like on all of them that showed up. So I'm gonna guess that maybe what I think what happened was I'll bet that when they painted it, it was like this, and then the, the paint probably collected down there somehow. So, okay, that one, uh, that's good too. Now, if you're wondering how hard this was to order guitars from China, like was it really all that bad? Uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> It was unbelievably stressful. Um, you know, I don't speak Chinese. That probably would have helped. <laughs> and so you're just sort of at the mercy of them. You're trying to communicate all these things. These guitars are not at all the standard guitars that they make. These are a custom run where I was specifying everything I could <laughs> about the production of them. So uh, because I wanted it to be really close to a certain other famous guitar. As close as I could get it without stepping over the line. And you can see with the headstocks, even though I told them not to do that, they did it anyway. You just run into the possibility that these things are gonna happen. And you're dealing over email across an ocean, and a lot of the stuff, you're not gonna see what happened until it's too late to do something about it. So it is, I thought it was pretty stressful. Next iteration might be a little easier because I mean one of the main stresses is like are the people you're dealing with even a legitimate business like or are they you know are these scammers <laughs> these like Nigerian guitar scammers that uh, you know uh, I am finding myself in possession of millions of dollars of guitars if you'll just give me your bank account number so you know you don't know if the people you're dealing with are honest or 
um, whether they even know what, a, what, you, what you really want. I actually ordered six guitars from a different vendor at the same time I placed these orders, and then I kept demanding that they give me photographs while the things were in process. And they wouldn't do it, and they wouldn't do it. And then finally they started sending them to me, and it was like, holy cow, you guys are not making anything like what I told you to make, you know? And I ended up canceling that order. Now, it's, it's not that I think that they're dishonest. I think they're doing the best they can. But... They just don't know what they're doing. And so, what are you gonna do? Now uh, maybe we'll do this guy. Now let's get these off here. Uh, not sure if you can pick this up, but I'm actually kind of relieved that these are as good as they are. I These boxes have been sitting around my house for a few days. I was actually afraid to open them up because there could have been anything in here. So I think here we've got things that are guitars. Gives me something to work with. Oh, now get out there. Oh yes, oh, that's beautiful. Okay, so that's these are the ones I was really looking forward to. If you're making burst style guitars, you are just obligated to get some that are in orange, but this was the color I really wanted. I've always wanted a blue guitar and it's like nobody makes blue guitars. Except Ivan as I guess makes a few. Oh, the paint on it's great. I don't see that little flaw. This is brilliant, okay, gorgeous. Frets feel good. Looks awesome. Let's flip her over. Oh, <laughs> I'm just loving this, guys. Uh, is it two-piece here? Might be, but you can't see it because of the paint. So uh, I'm. I might not. Uh, I might not actually sell these blue ones. <laughs> this is just beautiful. This is kind of the guitar. This is the look of the guitar I've waited my whole life for. So, uh, we'll be doing some other videos where I take these apart technically, do some setups and everything on them, uh, get them ready to actually be guitars instead of just husks of guitar bodies. But uh, this is mm, gorgeous. Love it. Okay. When we do the technical teardown of these, uh, I'm going to show you what's going on in here. I think these actually have a maple cap, which is a little surprising to me. I thought for sure they'd do maple, uh, flame maple veneer right over the mahogany, um, but it looks like they put a cap. God bless the Chinese. Service on this, perfect. Frets feel pretty good. I'll take another look at these. Okay, all right. Get some boiled linseed oil on these fingerboards. Okay. So it's funny, I didn't want the Chinese to send me a bridge. I wanted them to send me a tailpiece. And they sent me a bridge and a tailpiece. <laughs> Bridges are pretty critical. So I wanted American stuff for that. So maybe Chinese people only make blue guitars. I don't know. These blues, I would say those... The orange ones, I thought were okay. These are just, these are just better. These are just better. On a scale of one to 10, Gibson Les Paul being a 10, uh, I'd say these blues are like uh, eight and a half, maybe. And the, oh gosh, that's just pretty. Whew. And the, uh, the orange bursts are probably more like, a, you know, I'd say like an eight. Just ever so slightly, I think they're not quite as nice. Wow, that's beautiful. Okay. Gorgeous guitar. Okay. So I haven't checked the frets. I'm going to check out all the tech specs on this thing in a different video. 
Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. I gotta order the nuts. I wanted to actually get these in, get the calipers on them so I could order the right width. And um, the Tone Pros are coming in tomorrow. Other than that, I've got all my hardware. So I can start putting these things together, but I'm gonna do take some time with the setup. Make sure these frets are good. They're a little, they could stand a polishing. Um, yeah, they could stand a polishing. I, I'm gonna put some work into these frets. Uh, we'll see how it goes, so. That's it, last one. Gorgeous, blue, less polish type guitar. <laughs> see if we can get the video of this. I don't even know if I got audio on that first set of video because I'm an idiot and I didn't plug in the the uh, microphone. <laughs> so I don't know if the camera's built-in mic caught me. You can see nice book match, flame maple veneer. If you look inside here, it looks like this is a maple cap. Wasn't sure about that. So maple cap with a flame maple veneer is exactly what you want on something that you can afford that's not going to cost you four grand. This is actually rosewood. <laughs> I'm just not going to say anything more. I'm going to plead Fifth Amendment. Fourth Amendment? Some kind of amendment. I'm going to plead an amendment um, regarding this rosewood. So, uh, and then here you can see the logo is not... Well, can't quite get in there. The logo is not as great as I would really like it to be. Um, it's a little pixelated, but it's okay. It's all right. Could be worse. And then, let's see, where is that? Now I can't even see it. Little tiny little hairline crack here. It's in the wood. I thought I saw a defect in the paint. And now that I'm looking on this guy, I can't find it anywhere. Maybe this one didn't have it. Okay, so I've got a little crack there. All right. Okay, I don't even know. I'm like pressing buttons on this stupid camera. <laughs> so I don't even know what I'm getting. Um, but this is the back of the second one. I'll go do the first one again because I don't even know what I've got on that. But you can see two little very slight finish flaws here. And there, and I notice them, and I don't like them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to the manufacturer about those. Other than that, it's a really pretty guitar, and it's got actual rosewood fingerboard, which again, I'm gonna plead Fifth Amendment on that. Fifth, fourth, some amendment. Um, I'm gonna plead some kind of amendment, but they, uh, you can't get those on American guitars anymore. So, okay, so this is the first one, and it doesn't have those finish flaws, but what it's got is a very tiny like little hairline crack here. Um, I'll have to see, that might have been, it, sometimes this veneer, it's very thin, it might have gotten torn, and whoever was working that day decided that they were just gonna slap it on here and hope that it was uh, not noticeable, but it is. So, um, I've got a bone to pick with this guy too. All right, so, uh, and then here, I mean, these are just like, that's not, that's a pretty substantial defect in the wood. In fact, it looks like it might have been done in finishing. Um, but other than that, uh, so there, and then up here, I'm not too pleased with it. It's a very dark spot in the wood. This is the kind of thing on an expensive guitar QC just throws the wood away. Um, these guitars are so inexpensive, they can't afford to throw any wood away. And we'll just call this Burst 3, <laughs> just so that we can identify them. But again, finish flaw here, same one that that one had. And then, uh, is there one? That, no, that's pretty picky. I'll just say that's not great. I won't call it a flaw. Uh, again, just beautiful. That is That veneer is gorgeous. Looks like it's a cap. That's really impressive. So capped. The glue joint looks great here. You may see there's a lot of globby looking glue in there. That is exactly how a Gibson looks. <laughs> so I'll show you the inside of my Gibson sometime. But that's this is what they look like when they come out of Gibson. So great, great bound all the way up. And then put in a little uh, a tusk nut. Uh, these are all going to get tusk nuts. And then the back of this one is actually really pretty. They almost book matched the mahogany here that looks really good going up the neck looks nice again here with the lighter finish very obviously did two pieces here um, and then the back of this headstock looks beautiful so all right this one's probably 
Overall, I'd say of the bursts, I'd say this one's the nicest, but it does have that. I have to talk to the vendor. I'm new to all this. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to talk to him and gripe him out a little bit. But these guitars, we're talking about so such a small amount of money, it's hard to really <laughs> beat them up too much. So, okay. Okay, so now these blue guys, I think they're really exciting. I've always wanted a blue burst guitar, and they just didn't make them. Gibson makes them now. <laughs> they never did in the past. I just think it's gorgeous. I love the way this looks. And to be honest, these are probably going to come across as higher quality because a darker finish just hides more stuff, right? So on the orange bursts, I'll just call them orange bursts, but on those, you're going to see a lot more defects here. The darker stain just covers a multitude of sins, but this thing just looks like it's from the future. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the orange ones look like they're from China in uh, 2019. <laughs> But I don't see any flaws on these. Again, could just be that the darker stain just covered things up better. Um, but they're just, these are pretty flawless fiber. I've got some people that said that they want dibs on the first few of these. They can pick any of them, but uh, I got to tell you what, if it were me, I'd pick one of the blue ones. All right, here's blue guy number two. Really no new tale to tell here. It's just another gorgeous guitar. I don't see any flaws in it. Uh, looks really good. Rosewood, if you look at actual rosewood, it's very inconsistent in color, and this is no exception. Um, I'm going to hit it with some boiled linseed oil. That's what you do with rosewood. Brings out that really dark, gorgeous uh, patina, and it conditions it. makes it last longer. So a little bit of roughness here. Um, I actually had to get them to put this uh, truss rod hole here by special request. They were going to do like the Epiphone style one, but I didn't want that. So, and there we go again. Strebler logo could be better, but it's not the worst. You know, hey, it is what it is, right? These are not $3,000 guitars. So, uh, kind of by the time it's all said and done, if you add up the cost of the hardware that's put on them, that's what the guitar is going to cost. So, um, okay, there we go. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, I just, I don't see any flaws on the blue ones at all. And here is blue guy number three. Again, I just, I don't see any defects at all. You see here, yeah, it's capped. It's got a cap on top of mahogany. Beautiful. All right, they did a good job here. Nice tenon in there. Can't even see where, okay, I see what they did. All right, um, this would be, cla this would be uh, equivalent to like an old Gibson, what they call a short tenon. Okay. And the back on this one's particularly nice. They either book match it or put a veneer on it or something. But this is a, this might be the nicest one of the blue ones, blue number three. So for the one guy who, before I even bought these things, I had a guy who said he wanted the first one, period. So uh, this might be your guitar, dude. So that's it. Future videos, we'll be going over the whole process of turning those things from things that are kind of like a guitar into actual guitars. Uh, and uh, I'll be putting up other content that's guitar related as well. Some cover tunes that I'll be doing if my hand ever gets to the point where I can play again. I, my left hand is numb from a surgery that I had to correct numbness, which made it worse. But uh, supposedly it's supposed to get better. But uh, that's going to be it. So in the future I'll be doing more videos on all kinds of topics related to music. and. See if we can get those guitars going. I already kind of have pre-orders for almost every one of them. But if you're interested in one, drop me an email. If I can't get you one of these, then I can probably get you one on the next order. So have a good one, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.